Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. We've got a lot to cover today. So, um, sorry about yesterday's show. It caught a flag, and so I had to take it down. And so, I put it up on the backup channel, and whoever reviewed it uh, allowed it to go through. So, it's on the backup channel if you want to watch that. I put it here on the, um, the pinned comment here in the chat for after this show. You can watch the decode that we did on the film con staging uh, and so now i wanted to show you one last thing that ties into that film con staging before we get into today's show uh, i want to make sure we're connected first give me the heads up let me know okay perfect tom says we're good to go i wonder what's going on here oh probably because we have google earth open well we'll close google earth and then hopefully it won't uh, buffer if it's buffering right now. But in the film, they actually say that the origin of the Shiras originated someplace in this complex called the Chrysanthemum Complex. Here you can see the subtitles from the film that the, that the Chrysanthemum Complex in Hong Kong is where the Shiras originated now in the decode on the backup channel that you can watch after this show we exposed that the chrysanthemum that there is actually a kind of chrysanthemum called the coronarium and of course that links into exactly what's happening right now but there was something i forgot to show you on that decode and here it is right here i went into google earth and i typed in chrysanthemum complex hong kong and i hit the search button and we're going to do that together right here and it took us to a place in london specifically in the place called wayfair wayfair is the name of this uh i guess neighborhood and it took us to the hong kong trade development council now on its face that doesn't really mean anything until you go down here and look at the front of this building. And this gave me chills. Right there. In the glass above the actual door. Is what appears to me to be a bat. Look at that. And I want you to look at the border of your screen. Let's, let's fix this up here. I want you to look at the left border of your screen and compare what you're looking at on the top of this door to the bat that's in the Constagion movie right there in the frame. Now, is this an accident? I don't think so. Now, what you see over here on this moniker is a man by the name of Sir Robert Peel. And I looked him up. Nothing really to see there. He was a prime, prime minister of England in the 1800s. His, his name's a little bit weird, Peel, but, you know, we can't really read anything else into that. But here it is right here. Uh, it takes you to 16 Upper Cross Wiener Street when you type in Chrysanthemum Complex, Hong Kong. So I'm going to go ahead and close Google Earth now. So that uh, we get a good stream today. Now, here's something else that's weird. I notice, you know, everybody's been talking about the Astro, right? Well, that brought to mind something very weird. Remember that show, The Jetsons? Well, there was a dog. And many of you will remember that dog's name. I'll give you a clue. ruh row row roy Remember that? His name was Rastro. And Rastro was always squeezing people, wasn't he? He was the overbearing, loving dog, always squeezing the life out of her. This is crazy. And this is, these are the things that make me wonder about exactly how our reality is put together. Do you become a victim to this stuff when you're involved in this world and its dynamics when you are not awake to these things you know the bible does say 
my people perish from lack of knowledge. And here we have Astro squeezing the life out of people. Now there's an episode here called Smash. It's the 33rd overall episode in the series. But Astro does not make an appearance in this particular episode. But I thought it was interesting nonetheless. Now let's get into some of these other headlines today. I'm going to make sure you guys are with me before we keep going with this. Very good. All right, let's keep going with this. Now, it's getting easier and easier to catch these controllers and their lies and hypocrisy, isn't it? They're now trying to claim that the reason why small businesses are going extinct is because they can't find workers? What about when it was mandated for them not to have workers? Remember that? I guess that was no big deal, right? Just make people stay in their homes, shut down their businesses for a few months, make impossible rules that dip further into their savings, like thousands of dollars in floor stickers, plexiglass, masks, reduced hours, curfews, passport-only customers. Oh, that had nothing to do with the decimation of small business in America, did it? Let's read about this nonsense. Small biz laments not having enough supply to meet demand as holiday near port crisis deepens. While big box retailers receive most of the attention during the holidays, it's small businesses who some say are the heartbeat of the economy and help bring communities together. Yeah, uh, that's why you treated them the way you did during the spam nimic. You know, there's going to be a day of reckoning. And I just hope that people don't forget exactly what we went through over the last two years. Not being able to show up to the funerals of the people that passed in our lives. Not being able to go to hospitals and see the children being born. Not being able to be there for each other because of the division that was caused. And I hope people never forget what happened. Because it, it almost appears as though they're trying to rewrite history. They're trying to, you know, change the history books and make us all forget as they start to come out of this spam demic. It says many are struggling to navigate the rough shoals of the supply chain crisis. So they're going to blame all of it on this now. It's all this now instead of what all the other things I just mentioned. There are 32 million small businesses in the U.S. that employ nearly 61 million workers. 47% of the labor force and the sector is responsible for over 40% of the economy's output. So, with but with the Vidco 19 shutdown, many small businesses were left vulnerable and had to shutter their doors for good. Oh, at least they admit it here. From boutique retailers and other small businesses who vie for consumer mindset, the holiday season can make or break them. So, that's the story on what's going on with small businesses. Now, here's a cute story. You know, it can't all be gloom and doom, right? Let's see if we can pull this up. These little tigers were born in this zoo. Now, I don't like to see animals caged, but look at this mama tiger. I don't need to hear the ad. Let's let that ad play out before we look at mama tiger. Now, what I've learned about wildlife is do not mess with mama and her cubs, right? Listen to this mama tiger as she hisses. Look at this. Boy, oh boy, look at this. Oh, that is crazy. Now that, that gives me chills. I would not step anywhere near a mama tiger when she's got her cubs. That tiger will mess you up. So here we are. Now this is Mexico, you know, in today's world with all the political correctness. I can't even believe that any zoos exist anymore, especially in America. 
uh, you know, to, to cage up an animal that's supposed to be in the wild, wild, just so that we can enjoy it, is not is not something that's really acceptable anymore. Okay, so um, pretty crazy. Now, if you tuned into yesterday's show, we were talking about a new meme that has emerged. Now, this is crazy. The new meme is naked person in a cage being watched by a camera. I'm not making this up. Now, a story just broke a couple of days ago about a naked man in a New York building who was rescued from inside of a wall after they had drilled holes and stuck a camera in to find his location. Well, as I was reading the comments to that video... One of you told me about an almost identical story about it. This time, a naked woman in Los Angeles who was also trapped between walls and they had to drill holes to see where she was before they were able to rescue her. Now, here's what is weird about these stories. And I'm going to show this to you, but there's basically no explanation given as they're plainly and calmly telling the story, reporting on the story, there's no explanation given as to, first of all, why these people were naked. And second of all, what were they doing inside of a wall? Like, they just gloss right over it. I mean, this is like an episode out of the Twilight Zone. So, basically, the reporters are very oblivious to it and it's noticeable how oblivious they are and it's pretty shocking i want you to listen to this story let me zoom this back here difficult rescue it happened between the walls of the two commercial buildings you see right behind me firefighters say the woman was trapped in a space so tight it took them several hours to get her out A woman cries out after oh my becoming gosh. trapped between two commercial buildings as firefighters race to save her. <laughs> Workers at this auto body shop on the 1000 block of North Harbor Boulevard in Santa Ana say they heard someone screaming for help just before 2 p.m. Well, we, we heard a lady in the back uh, behind our shop over there screaming, 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 you know what I'm saying? But they couldn't find her. We called the cops and the cops came in, got on the roof. And they see her stuck with the, between the two walls, and she's all naked. Wedged between two walls and unable to move. And she's all naked. Move. Firefighters unable to reach her. So when we saw this, it was quickly acknowledged that this was going to be a technical rescue. Uh, uh you uh, think? That we we're looking at here. Using a special concrete saw, firefighters devised a plan to cut the woman out of the wall. The main focus is to get to her without injuring her. This is the chunk of concrete that firefighters had to cut out of this wall in order to free this woman. And if you look over here, you can see this is where they were cutting. She was trapped inside a space just eight inches wide. She's in pain. She's in, still in pain. She's screaming in pain. She's upside down, too. Rescuers inserted tiny cameras adjacent to the area where the woman was stuck to monitor her condition and determine where it would be safe to cut. Two and a half hours later, she's pulled to safety, alive but shaken. When we got her out, she was pretty dirty and it was pretty hard to tell, you know, what, what she looked like, how old she was roughly. Uh, the, the main focus at that point was just to get her uh, in the ambulance so our paramedics can get, you know, better lighting and just a real good look and see what kind of injuries she had. Tonight, authorities say they still don't know how the woman <laughs> became wedged between the two buildings. A local business owner here says that he frequently encounters homeless people sleeping on the roof and suspects that she may have rolled over into that gap while taking a nap this <laughs> Are afternoon. Are you kidding me? Reporting live in Santa Ana. Oh, Johnson. just happened to be taking a nap on a roof and rolled over and fell between two buildings. Yeah, right. Now, when I first had pulled this story up, they didn't give any explanation. They were just reporting on it as if just plainly talking about it as if this kind of stuff happens every day. They still don't tell us why she was naked. Uh, hello. So yesterday we were talking about all this and we figured out what this meme probably means. And the whole part about being oblivious to the facts surrounding the story and just them telling it plainly like this. 
And I think what this amounts to is the desensitization of seeing people locked in boxes. They're trying to like normalize it. And the whole camera aspect to it is the ability to monitor or view the subject, to view the person who's in the box, the tight space. Now, I believe that this most likely represents the coming future of quarantine boxes. Okay. Now, here's a TikTok video. Many of you have seen this already. It's going around. And apparently in China, they are basically putting people in these quarantine boxes. And all you see is their head popping out. Let me play this. See if it plays here. Let's go to right here we go. Pay attention. from two other videos the first now so we saw the quarantine um china now i can't confirm i guess part of that video was not real they were trying to say that i was here in america so i cannot confirm that but i can confirm the video that you see here of the people in china and their them being in their quarantine boxes with their heads poking out no one is saying that that's not real. But here's the crazy thing. Okay. You've got the same meme occurring in iPad Goat 2. And we talked about this a little bit on yesterday's show. A person, in this case an animal, inside of a box with a little hole in a very tight space. Obviously being monitored, this particular goat from my pet goat too is behind a barbed wire fence inside of a box with its head popping out now this is obviously a quarantine camp now we've said this along the way as as have other channels i'm sure that this is a quarantine camp but this is very bizarre because now we've got this winter like landscape behind here is this the dark winter? Then you've got the dogs down here, which are being used to round people up, right? Got dogs at airports right now too, sniffing people out that they suspect might have Vidco 19. Now, all it takes is another surge, and this could be what America turns into. They could, now that they've pre programmed everyone and desensitized you to these, these crazy diseases, all they have to do is put something into motion or action, and things could very quickly turn into this in America. And this is why I tell you guys be independent from the system. You don't want to be in a big city when stuff like this goes down. We've been talking about this for years. This isn't about running away. This isn't about being in fear. This is a very biblical principle. The principle is, is that when God starts showing you signs and symbols, the writing on the wall, so to speak, he, then he will deliver you. But you have to do as he says. And if, if you see the signs and you ignore them, then you get stuck in places like Sodom and Gomorrah, or you get stuck in places like outside of the ark, or you get stuck in places like Nineveh or Egypt, right? There are dozens and dozens of examples in the Bible where God told people to get out. So, the bad voice is telling you to stay put and just have faith. That's the bad voice. There are, there are more examples of people leaving places than staying put. Now, what else do we see in this image here as we continue on decoding this snapshot from iPad Go 2? Well, there's obviously these electrical conduits here. Not conduits, but uh, I guess they call these... Uh, what is it called? 
these are insulators so that you can carry the wire and these are typical on any electrified fence okay so this is an electrified fence um you got the snowy environment of course that we just already covered and look at this on the front of this box this almost appears to be a gallo some people thought this could also be like a guillotine but to me, it almost looks more like a gallow, you know, for hanging and stuff. Now, this goes another level deeper. Because there is more to this meme than meets the eye. During the Black Death, people were basically trapped inside of their homes. And they were walled in. Look at this article here. Municipal authorities in Milan, Italy, walled up houses in which plague victims were discovered. Walled right into their houses, isolating them and their healthy housemates. This practice could not have affected infection uh, via blah, blah, blah. But we've been talking about Milan, Italy a lot, haven't we? And the whole vampire meme. Here's another source. Talking about people being walled in. Look at the dates here. The plague of 1666. Wow. Wow. There was no known cure. The victim's skin turned black. And these buboes appeared. It was infectious. A victim was locked in their house with their entire family, condemning them all to death. A red cross was painted on the door and the words, Lord have mercy on us. Wow. Here's another source. Same thing. Where they were saying that they basically walled people in, sealed them in. And I think this is the gaslighting that's happening with these stories. This is why these stories are appearing. They could be appearing on a spiritual level, I'll admit, but they're appearing for a reason. Sealing people in, painting a red cross on their door, marked with a red X. Now... What is this really about? Well, here's the story on plague crosses. And this goes all the way back to the very first Passover. Look at this. There's the word. Constagion. From the movie we just decoded. Placing this mark on the door. This goes all the way back to ancient Egypt which of course would be the Passover, marking the door, the blood of the lamb, so that the angel of death would pass over and not take the firstborn. Well, the enemy now has their own version of the Passover. They're flipping the script. They're flipping the script. And this is very serious. Because the Bible says that plague will come. I think that God is spiritually preparing us with revelations like this to understand the seriousness of all of this. Wow. So, there's a couple other stories here I wanted to show you of people being trapped in walls. Here's one. This one was all the way back in 2016. This is Metro UK. Boy trapped in a wall for three days while people ignored him crying. How did he get there? Look at this. Look at the look at the symbolism here on this shirt. That's a portal. It also means a lot of other things as well. Boy was trapped in a breeze block wall for three days without water before someone decided to smash the bricks and let him escape. He was 12 years old. They ignored his shouts. 
they heard a strange voice in the wall. He became trapped by slipping down into a tiny gap of less than a foot between the wall and the house. It's exactly what happened to that lady, right? It took three days of him crying, singing to himself to try to gain attention before police took a, a pickaxe to the wall and rescued him. Credible photos show him crouched inside the wall with one arm raised as, the, as there wasn't enough room to bend it, covered in gray dust without food and water. That is just bizarre. And they doused him with water, apparently. What is this about? Now, a couple of you had suggested that there may be some kind of, uh, I don't know, Philadelphia experiment kind of angle to this, where they're messing with time and space and people are being transported to these locations. I don't know if I subscribe to that, but it's interesting nonetheless, right? Remember the Philadelphia experiment where people are trapped inside the hull of the ship, half of them in, half of them out. I think if the person's like arm was sticking out of the wall, that then that might confirm that theory, but I don't know. It's interesting to consider all the possibility. Here's another story. Colorado man trapped in a store wall for up to three days. What is it with this three days? Heard yelling for days, but they couldn't find him. This is NBC News reporting on this. This was back in 2014. Another trapped in the wall meme. Again, I believe this is gaslighting for the coming spamdemic and people being trapped in their homes this is why these go back for so many years but look at this here they are firefighters drilling into the wall here to get this guy out how did he get there is the question was it let's see if this guy was naked this was in colorado let's read this story and see if there's a camera aspect to it as well did they drill a hole to find to stick a camera in here a Colorado man could face trespass charges after he was rescued Tuesday at a Marshall's department store near Denver, where he had been trapped inside of a wall for two or perhaps even three days. Now, this three-day thing is interesting because there's probably some of you right now in the chat who caught on to it on a spiritual level, saying that this matches the three days that we are, that the temple would be rebuilt that Jesus talked about, which is the temple, which is our bodies. Or the three days that Jonah was in the belly of the well, right? In a trapped, confined place. I'm sure some of you probably had caught on to that aspect to it. So, you know, instead of being born again in Christ, they want to be born, they want you born again in all of this madness and chaos, right? They want to reshape you, rebuild your temple in the image of the serpent instead of the image of Jesus. Employees at the store in Longmont, about 30 miles north of Denver, called police Tuesday morning when they heard a man yelling but couldn't figure out where the sound was coming from. Gosh, could you imagine how creeped out these people were? They probably thought this guy was a ghost. They're like, where is this, where is this coming from? Now, why didn't the guy just say, I'm inside a wall, right? Then they would have found him. How long does a person have to be screaming in order to, you know, find out where he's at? Members of the fire crew responded, also heard the man after about a half hour of searching. They broke through an exterior wall and found Paul Felick, 35 of Westminster, squished in a crawl space between the exterior wall and an interior wall. There was enough room for him to lie down, but not enough for him to maneuver to the access space from the roof from which he's believed to have fallen. He was described as a transit, was in pain, extremely cold. It was just 15 degrees Tuesday in Longmont, but he managed to crawl out on his own. Wow. 15 degrees. Could you imagine? That is just nuts. I think I got another story. Here's another one. Here's a movie. Walled In is the name of the movie. Look at this. Canadian 2009 horror thriller. So they've made movies about this kind of stuff. A little girl wakes up to find herself in a small concealed room. 
confused of what is happening till the room starts filling with cement from all corners. She cries for her father, but the cement only continues to rise before eventually she is buried alive. Huh. Now I'm claustrophobic, so this kind of stuff freaks me out. I think I watched, what was that movie? I think it was called As Above, So Below was the name of the movie. They were like in London down in the catacombs. I couldn't watch that movie. I was like, man, that freaks me out. People crawling through tight spaces. So there's something to this. There's definitely something to this. All right, what else do we have here? Let's get into these some of these other stories today. I'm going to check in with you guys and we'll keep going with this. Propane is our next story and this is not good, you guys. We had just talked about this and they are now saying that we are headed for propane Armageddon. This is not good. Prices are rising. Now we know that methane prices often follow petroleum gas prices, right? So when petroleum gas goes up, so does propane. Well, things are off the rails with propane right now. Let's read and see what's going on. October 19, 2021, U.S. propane prices are so high and supply is so scarce that the market appears headed for Armageddon during the depths of winter. Uh, can anybody say dark winter? Stock pause of the key heating fuel and manufacturing feedstock in the world's biggest economy probably have already topped out for the year and will be stretched as cold weather descends in coming weeks. Prices for the first quarter of 2022 are so far above later dated supplies that it may indicate players are preparing for propane market Armageddon. Some regions may face outright shortages before the end of winter. You guys, this is not good. They've almost doubled this year and are on course for the strongest rally since 2009. North America propane touched a seven and a half year high of more than $1.50 a gallon earlier this month. They're expecting colder than normal winter that will place even more strain on propane supplies. So that's what's going on, you guys, with the propane market. Now, they are trying to tell us, and I don't know if this story is true, but they're trying to tell us this is all going to come back down by next year as the oil oversupply starts to catch up. But I guess we're going to have to wait and see. This is from Bloomberg. U.S. sees oil market oversupplied by early next year. U.S. government projected that the global oil markets will become oversupplied and prices will fall by early next year. Cooling expectations that the White House may tap the nation's energy reserves. Supply increases next year from OPEC as well as U.S. drillers will ultimately pr pressure prices lower. U.S. benchmark crude will fall below $80 a barrel. So here's what happened, okay? They put everybody in their homes. They shorted the oil market knowing there wouldn't be as much transportation because of the lockdowns, which is now causing the problem we're having now. We told you that was going to happen. Said you can't just short the supply of oil and the prices will go through the roof. But during that time that we were telling you that, when the lockdowns were in place, the mainstream media was denying that this would cause any kind of inflation. Of course, they want to deny that, right? But now look exactly what's happening. It is the main driver behind the increased oil prices and natural gas. Now, looks like the railroads are opposing the mandates, but this is not good, you guys. Because this will be another excuse that they use that our supply chain is not operating correctly and this will further increase the cost of goods going into the winter. And this is what I have figured out that is the strategy for dark winter. This was the strategy all along to basically cause the supply chain shortage. The mandates were... Their sole purpose was to sabotage the supply chain. How do I know this? Well, about 30 to 50% of America did not want the sticker. 
they a lot of them did it under duress or under threats of losing their job. Not because they wanted to, but because they had to, or they felt like they had to. So if you've got that many people who don't want the Pokemon sticker, 30% of America, 30 to 50%, then basically what that amounts to is the workforce being cut by a potential third. Now, we know that a lot of people caved in. But even a 10% reduction in the supply chain workforce would cause issues. And that's what we're dealing with right now. Another major railroad has gone to court to determine whether it has the authority to require all its employees to get the Pokemon sticker. BNSF Railroad filed a lawsuit Sunday against its major unions over this mandate. It joins Norfolk Southern and Union Pacific which both filed similar lawsuits against the unions last month. Wow. So all of these major train unions are filing suits against the mandate. This is not good, you guys. So now we got trucks and trains, trains, planes, and automobiles. Now, here's part of the problem. The nonconformist community can't all get on the same page, can we? Because of crap like this. A third of us are waiting for JFK to come back. We need to wake up, people. Because we need you. You're getting sidelined in this stuff, and it's decimating the truth community, the nonconformist community. I'm not going to read that article. Because by simply reading it, the letter that shall not be named, they'll stick a dumb banner and lump us in with the letter that shall not be named. Now, let's get into Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Aaron Rogers. Not his neighborhood anymore, apparently. He's supposed to be like the number one quarterback in the NFL. And he's on the roast right now. This is New York Times. Scientists fighting a new source of misinfo Aaron Rodgers neighborhood now if this doesn't wake people up I'm not sure what will how they cancel anybody who doesn't agree with their views on the Pokemon sticker no room for error no room for wiggle you just get canceled right and eventually they're going to do this with climate change too you don't agree, you get canceled. You don't play ball, then you get kicked off the field. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter what excuse Rogers gave. It's his body. He didn't even have to give him an excuse at all. This is like, you know, demanding that he give some kind of excuse or reason as to why he didn't get the Pokemon sticker. It's like requiring someone to give an explanation as to why they ended a life that's inside of them, right? Knowing that celebrities, anytime they talk about something, they're making a political statement to all their young followers. And in the case of a life inside of you, that would be a message to people that it's socially acceptable and okay, right? Which sounds far more serious than a guy who just decided not to get a Pokemon sticker. But you're not allowed to ask people why they end life inside of them. You're not allowed to ask that. So why are they allowing this? The hypocrisy is glaring. It's glaring. As Mr. Rogers gets the roast. Wow. NFL finds the Packers 300K, Rodgers 15K for protocol violations. You are a violator. Now, I understand that most of these people are Masons, and this is all just gaslighting. But this is what's going on. This is what's going on. Now, as we begin to wind down here, let's go to this next story. Now, I've held off on crypto for a very long time, and you guys all know why. I've tried to talk you through it, 
It was too easy. It was who wants to be a millionaire? Literally everybody that invested in this and bought Bitcoin, for instance, in the beginning are all millionaires now. Every single one of them. So you think that the SEC just allowed this to go on for the last decade and didn't care and did nothing about it? I knew it was a trap from the get-go. Too good to be true. Now, some people might argue that crypto is so good that governments can't control it. It's impossible. Well, I don't buy that. Look at the solidarity surrounding Bitco 19, for instance. How all the nations of the world just magically came together. You think they can't come together to get rid of something that's working directly against the economies? Of course they can, which is why it felt like a setup from the beginning. They can shut all this down whenever they want. This whole thing, I believe, was just a test run. And now they're tightening the screws. And now, if you don't report your tax, it's a felony. Well, how are they going to... Casey, they can't track you. They can't find you. It's crypto. Uh, how do you think they're going to track you? Of course, they have mechanisms in place to track this. In fact, they're going to have better mechanisms in place than they would any other way. That's the way the whole thing was designed. It was designed to have secure transactions. How do you have a secure transaction? You have a record. So, of course, I wouldn't be shocked if they went back in retro. And so, you think you got away with your millions, but they'll just go back into whatever the crypto world is and find where you didn't pay your taxes. And now, you could go to federal prison if you didn't pay your taxes on whatever money you made on crypto. You don't think they can do it? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Wow. I think this is just another huge dragnet. Let's read this. This is important. The infrastructure bill makes crypto tax reporting failures a felony. A felony. Crypto advocates have worried for months about U.S. President Bo Jivin and his infrastructure bill, which includes new reporting requirements for digital assets like crypto and non-fungible tokens. What does that mean? Whether the report comes from a trade or business under 6050i or a financial institution under BSA, the U.S. government is interested in obtaining information about a sender of $10,000 plus. So, crypto. What does this say? Oh, there's a comment down here. This guy says, I refuse to follow a tax return for selling some things on online flea markets. Huh. Interesting. So, that's what's going on with crypto. Let's get on to this next story. A couple more stories for you guys. Here's a, a funny one. You got a quarter of the states of America, about, about one-fourth, suing against the mandates... Oh, but go ahead and fire people anyway for not complying with the mandates. Are we still on Earth? Because it doesn't feel like it. Let's read this. Pokemon sticker mandates. Employers urge to go ahead despite the court challenges. Just go ahead and fire people for not complying. You know, these people don't care about us. They don't care that they ruin people's lives. Do you understand that it's a completely different life experience for people like us who work paycheck to paycheck versus the people who have lots and lots of money. And yeah, they might have a bad year in business, but they don't lose their house. They don't worry about how they're going to eat. They don't have to keep the, you know, the propane turned down so they don't run out for the winter. Or because they want to save money on their gas bill. They're living a completely different existence. So it's easy for them to hire and fire people at will. And this is what enrages me about the divide between the rich and the poor. We have no assurances on our level. None. Nobody cares if you can't pay your rent. You just get put on the street or hope you got friends or family that will take you in. And I'm tired of it. They keep telling us we live in the greatest country in America, but then stuff like this still happens. There's no assurances. The White House money urged employers to go ahead and comply with a new mandate 
even though a federal appeals court temporarily blocked the requirement over the weekend. That rule administered through the Labor Department of OSHA would require employers with 100 workers to mandate the full Pokemon sticker by January 4th or else require them to mask and get tested for the Shirus Weekly. Employment lawyers say the ruling from the Court of Appeals raises questions about whether the matter will be settled before looming deadlines. I mean, this is just chaos. This is chaos. You got people going into the holidays with all this uncertainty. Will I have a job? Won't I? You know, my heart goes out to, to these people dealing with this. It really does. Because this is just very sad, what, they, what they're doing to Americans. And, you know, you can blame Bo Jivin, and yes, it's his fault. But it's all, it's all of these people at the top. It's both sides. We went through the same uncertainty during the spamdemic, didn't we? With the businesses being decimated under other, under everybody's hero, Thump. Now, the businesses are warning. They said there could be irreparable harm if they don't reverse this. Coalition of Businesses argued in federal court that they would suffer irreparable harm if the courts failed to permanently halt Bo Jivin's mandate. Several staffing companies, religious employers, other businesses said in the court filing that the Fifth Circuit, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals should permanently block the standard to protect Americans from being coerced to comply with unconstitutional Pokemon sticker mandates. So, this is not good, you guys. Not, not good. Now, this is our last story, and I'll put links to all this for you guys in the pinned comment. Hopefully, we don't get a flag on this video. I don't think I said anything weird, but you, you never know. It all depends on who's, who's reviewing the video, right? Now, it's funny because they keep telling us to have complete trust in science, even when the ridiculous resurfaces, like this video of Mommy, I Got an Ouchie, telling the world... That you have to give, that you can give the hive, we have to call it, which is that word, to people by simply being around them. Yes, he's on video. Mommy, I got an ouchie saying that just being in a household and having contact, you can spread the hive. Wow. He even went as far as to say, that you could put children in danger just to just to make sure there was some emotional attachment to it to put the maximum amount of fear in people now i understand that science is evolving but this statement literally probably caused lots of pain and suffering for thousands of people who contracted the hive in the 1980s why because their families and friends listened to mommy i got an ouchie and stayed away from these people, isolated themselves away from them. When you're going through something like this, you probably want love and support, and they simply were not getting that. Great job, Mommy Got an Ouchie. You are the shining star of science. Wow. All right, let's go back in the chat here. Thanks for sticking with the show today, you guys. Let's go into the chat. Now, I don't really have anything scheduled for tomorrow yet. Um, got some movies I'm looking at. But we'll, we'll be back on here. We'll figure something out. Probably just do more headlines. I'll look and see what's going on with the headlines. But, um, yes, they're coming for the babies. Always have been. More, more nudists in the walls, please, says Corey. I don't know if you want to have that fetish. But yeah, it's interesting nonetheless, right? I mean, what is this all about? Unreal. Ah, oh, man. Mommy, I got an ouchie. Well, the algos are smart now. When you just say it by itself, they catch on. They, like, add the F for you. I'm like, are you kidding me? So now we got to say, Mommy, got an ouchie. Mommy, I got an ouchie. So, got to have a little bit of fun. 
Yeah, weird. People in walls. Naked people in walls. Yeah, they just, yeah. Complete trust and faith. We're in full chaos mode now. Like, it's anything goes at this point. You've got, in plain sight, tens of thousands of people showing up to a concert where you enter in through Molech's mouth. I mean, really? And you don't expect something bad's going to happen? And everyone feeling sorry for the people. And I'm like, why did you go? Why did you go? Do you not see what's happening here? You're entering the pit of hell. This is the reality we live in now, you guys. So. There you go. But we're all protected, aren't we? We're protected because we do not perish because of lack of knowledge. We see the signs, symbols. We see the fruit of these people, which is rotten to the core. And we stay away from this stuff. We're in the world, but not part of it. And therefore, God can protect us, can't he? When he tells us to get out of the situation we're in, we can start making changes in our lives and stay away from all this madness. Just stay away from it. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop off of here. Thanks for your, your chats and your comments. I'll put links to all this. And we'll see you guys in the morning. Much love, everybody. Take care and be safe.